Okay, let's see if this works. Um, it's been a while since I did a live stream. I got a whole new computer. So hopefully I can actually stream well and do some development at the same time. So I'm um, just checking this out here. Let's see. I think we're okay. No drop frames yet. Okay, I, well, it only takes 300K a second for that. Probably more when... um when the game's running and stuff like that. Okay, great. Great then. Well, well and good. All good and well and, and great. Very appreciative that it is so good and great. Okay, uh, what I'm working on today's stream is um, explosions. I'm gonna start with some explosive damage waves. Let's go ahead and run the game and check out where we're at so far. I've been working this week on the charged attack, um, all sorts of like combo timers, and just basically uh, adding all these different weapons in and making it a lot more fun. Um, it actually is already a lot more fun when you add in all these weapons instead of just having the sword. It gets really fun when you have, especially you have the blink. You can move around quicker and uh, attack people that way, and then you've got the charged attack. So pretty soon I'm going to be going and making it so all these uh, these new weapons are being going to be used by the uh, the AI. Right now the AI doesn't know how to do the charge attack and doesn't know how to use a blink or grenades or anything like that. All, only knows how to use the sword and the shield. So that'll be good to, um, to get them doing that. But first I want to do something. So I just want to make the grenades do a damage explosion wave. And I also want to make... Um, them leave behind some smoke and some other particle effects, stuff like that. So that's what I'll be working on right now. Um, I know I've got an, an IMS in the AI system. So basically what's happening here is when you throw a grenade, it launches, it creates a grenade entity. And then when the grenade entity hits the ground, it spawns a grenade explosion entity. So the grenade explosion entity, um, we'll have uh, some AI which creates the smoke effect and stuff like that. Like this. So it's got this flags explosive. Oh, see it already has part of its, its uh, effects right here. Screen shake. So we're going to do something like anims. Anims smoke. Something, something, something. I think I've already done this for, I know I have actually. Oh shoot, this is a, yeah, this is Songbringer's code? Yeah, okay. Songbringer, um, smoke. I've got a couple different places. Here it is. This is the one I was thinking of. So this is a special behavior called anims. And it just goes and um, looks through the string that you get it. This is not meant to be something you call every single tick by the AI. It's like only every once in a while it calls this. That's why there's all these string comparisons. Normally I would use integer comparisons and all that versus the standard words. But these are special words which have all sorts of special meanings. So there's really no sense in going and creating integer values to represent them all. Uh, let's go ahead and copy that. And we want to go into uh, behavior something. Here's one. Excel. Do I have a NIMS already? No, nope. okay. So we need to hook up a behavior called a NIMS. Let's see if we even have the word a NIM or a NIMS in here in behaviors. There's animate. I'm fairly certain this is the word called. Oh, special. Okay, this is behavior special. That's right. That's a better word for it. Good. Okay, we're gonna use the word special for this. So this is Wraithbinder's source. Um, yeah, yeah, we already just hooked up the, whoop. The screen method's been hooked up already. Let's go ahead and create behavior special. And we're gonna need to hook up the anim smoke as well. A 
Let's get this. Uh, oops. Paste this in here. Oh, what? What the? What the heck? <sighs> what? Uh oh. You could temporarily disable auto indent. Let's see, set auto indent. What is it, false? Unset? Ah, I can't remember the, uh, I'm going about this the hard way, aren't I? Oh, set no AI. That's it. What the? <sighs> okay. Let's do this the old way, <laughs> the old fashioned way. Tag nab it. Jeez, man, that was way too much work. Okay. Let's go clean up this method signature. Okay, we're going to give it a V3 pause. Let's see, does this need to be attached to anything? No, smoke's independent, so it doesn't need to be attached to a parent or anything. So a V3 pause would be all right. Don't need to pass in like a offset and a parent, for example. V3 size. Color. Color. Okay, so this is copied over straight from Songbringer. I'm going to comment out anything that really isn't uh, needed anymore. We're going to be loading a bunch of frames here. I think this is a good way to do it. What the heck is frame? Gets gets bright frame. Why is that not an error? Okay, so let's call this just frame names. We're gonna be loading, uh, what was the common animation from Songbringer for the smoke? Uh, anim here we go, animation, smoke, I think it's smoke circle. 
Oh yeah, same same file name right here. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we don't need to load that way. We can say the number of frames is frame names dot size. We don't have areas anymore. Don't really have fluxes. Okay, here we're establishing a wind vector. I do have a wind vector somewhere. Oh, I guess I never really... Where should I stash this variable? I guess for now it can be in an M thing. It's, it has mostly to do with visuals, not necessarily the game. There is no game object anyway. I guess it could be a systems thing, really. Actually, that's the best place for it. So let's call that const v3 get wind vector. And in systems.cpp, So we'll hook up this method here to get the wind vector. Oh, shazzle. Then we just hit, but there's some little bug that happens when I'm starting to, I don't know what the heck, it, it how it happens, but in Vim, all of a sudden, Vim just like, uh, can't tab complete anymore. So we'll <laughs> close Vim, restart it, and it works again. Systems. All right, get wind vector. There we go, tab completion works. Oh, it's the cons. Oops. Const rep. Return the wind vector. And now the enims can use it. You've got systems. Yep. Okay, so wind. Cool. And uh, I think that's... Great, now we can do the same thing here. Mm, keep that. Okay, so black smoke moves faster, all right. It was nice to have that in Songbringer where you had a couple different types of smoke. All oh, right, we had the dirt colors and all that. Rainy weather. This is now gonna become a Z move factor because we're now 3D.
We used to have dirt colors. I guess we're gonna have to get the, well, we could know the color of the current tile. Let's just start with a dirt color. Um, we can find this in world.txt. Start with maybe the overworld. Overworld light, there we go, set up some variables for editing this hue saturation value and we go color dot to HSV and then we can just get rid of this HSV part oh. so there and like that make this math and then color from HS SV oh I got my chat window a little bit too small here voice of grog what's up buddy how you doing why is it no from HSV Oh, set HTSB. That's what we wanted. Yeah, it's good. Everything is all well here, too. Glad to hear you're good, man. What's anything new? Summertime now. The living's easy. <laughs> Not for me. But uh, living's easy for everybody that... Everybody that has a good sunshine in their life, huh? I'm stuck in the trees right now. No sunshine here. I'm just kidding. I love life. I love it. Weather type. We don't have a weather type right now. We don't have this raininess. So let's just comment out these lines too. Hey, what's up, Bidas? It's 100 degrees there. Oh my gosh. Hurricane season. Man, that is dangerous. You guys live on the edge out there. I'm in Oregon, actually. It's it's just incredible. It's like really nice weather. It's only like 80 degrees. Um, birds chirping. There's like pine trees. I'm up in a really nice, quiet uh, hill right now. Got a decent internet connection. Life's good. Life's really good. <laughs> well, we can hope. Yeah, I'm lucky to be here. So, yeah, so things are going good. I'm working here on Wraithbinder. Today I'll be working on explosions and smoke animations and stuff. Um, mixing 2D and 3D, and uh, Songbringer beta is going well. So the Songbringer iOS beta is going well. Um, it's running pretty pretty nicely on iPad and iPhone now. Um, there's only a few things left to do. The beta should be finished soon. With I well soon relatively like in the next month, it'll be finished, and then there'll be Songbringer iOS. That's cool. Finally, kind of close the book. 
on that. Okay, so P dot Z equals pause dot Z. Can't forget the Z component. Yeah, voice of Grog. Uh, I forget. Are you, um, are you at university right now? I forget what you're doing. It's been a while since we chatted. It's been a while since I did a live stream. Been doing. Uh, it's been kind of been kind of a busy month last month. June was crazy. Okay, so we'll just do a Z really high. Oh, that's right. You work for college down there. Yeah. Cool, man. How's it been going? Okay, we can at least do a const bool is fluxing false. So if you're just joining the stream, what I'm working on here is refactoring some, some code from Songbringer to do smoky animations. And I'm going to do this when we when a grenade explodes or when a bomb explodes, anything that's explosive goes off. It'll um it'll do this animation here. So a lot of this right here, I'm just refactoring stuff into this new system. You're very busy, huh? Web accessibility. Hey, what's What's new in web accessibility? I, it's been a long time since I would had done have done any websites at all, man, like a decade. So, but like, what's what's the latest stuff with web accessibility? I'm sure there's like new requirements, and everybody's getting better and better, and or stricter and stricter. However, you want to look at it. This is a math mix. Mix F. Oh, it's still just mix, mix F. All right. Rand. I'm sensing a pattern. Let's use our brains here. This is math. So. <laughs> Let's call that math sign. Is that just math sign? Hmm. It's a V3. Yeah, that's sign I or sign F. Ah, there we go. This is now the move Z factor. Oh, and that should be the Z. Okay, so this is uh This should also be sign I. Whoa, oh, that's probably what's fueling it, huh? People getting sued. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. I remember when I when I did some web development a long time ago, uh there was this one book I read called it was on it was on good web design, like that's what the point of the book was, and the title of the book was Don't Make Me Think. I don't know if I'm not sure if that's still a, a popular book or not in the web development world, but I thought it was such a great like a uh, principle for web development is just don't make people think don't make people like have to figure out your website it should be natural intuitive you know readable and just have a nice flow to it there really should just be very little thought going on i guess that's that's kind of a double-edged sword though okay this is the the z factor is going to be Different. We're gonna do size dot y is a lot like x, where it's size. It's a, uh, oh wait, this has got to be size dot xf. Oh yeah. It's a classic. Cool. I'm glad it's a classic in your circles.
Yeah, I'm sure that's like, uh, you know, there's like some best practices you, f you should follow. Man, this uh, syntax error highlighting here is really, really uh, enthusiastic. This whole line's all red. I think I've, I've rarely seen such. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> oh, okay, no matching constructor? Oh, okay, this is gonna make sense in a second. I'm sure of it. Oh, 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 oh I see a really, like, uh, really ugly part of it there. Okay, we'll make this one ZF. Uh, ZF. And then also times math. Oh, no, no, no. We don't want times wind here. Nah, nah. No more wind vector there. Okay, that looks good. We know what frame we're going to... Well, do we know what frame? What's up, member seven? All right, we don't have a wraith binder command yet. It does. Have you found the the 3D dev for Raid Binder to be hugely more difficult, different than Songbringer? Um, I I have done 3D dev before, but it was never this voxel art before. So it was really it was a huge learning curve to do this voxel engine. I've done like polygons before, like regular 3D stuff, but this is something else. The biggest learning curve, what the biggest difficulty that was at the beginning when I was trying to figure out how to do these vo these voxels. Because it was hugely expensive to do um, small, tiny voxels with all of them having um, triangles making them up. So when you, if you go, if you zoom all the way down, you've got a, a little tiny cube. You need at least six triangles um, to be able to create a cube, um, and that is a lot of effort. Um, passing that information along to the GPU, what, what you do is you like set up all these different um, uh, vertices and um, triangle and, uh, and all this information that you pass to the GPU every single time you you draw a frame. So it became really, it came, it, it got out of hand really quickly. But finally, when I figured it out, I was like, okay, I know how to do this now. I basically am just going to create a simple software renderer and um, render all the triangles. Instead of rendering all the triangles, I just render a single pixel representing that cube. So because this is pixel art still, and um, it, it just kind of made it all simpler. Uh, but as far as the as far as the other parts of three D game development, it's really not that much different than Songbringer at all. Actually, all of Songbringer's mathematics were three D already, most of it. Um, like the, your collision component and your position was all 3D. Everything about it was actually 3D except for the graphics. The graphics were all 2D for that. So it really it's not too much of a, um, a stretch to do the 3D dev here um, after getting all the engine working. And there's still some issues with the engine. So um, like it, it leaves behind some pixels without erasing sometimes and a few other little tiny issues left to do. But other than that, I'm really happy with this voxel engine. It's so cool to be able to sort of like rotate the camera, and um, oh, I broke it. Well, at least we can run the old version here. You know, just to be able to rotate this camera is like super sweet. I can't wait to see where this goes. This is such a huge asset for um, for the game itself. I can, wow, I can really. This is so awesome. I have a new computer here, and I'm just like revel relishing in. The fact that I can run this at 60 frames a second, rotate the camera, and I'm recording a live stream at the same time? <laughs> Eat that, old computer. Man, I feel lucky. So, but anyways, 3D Dev is, uh, I'm loving it. Yeah, I'm loving it, man. I'm really, uh, really excited to be making this game 3D, but also Songbringer 2. I'll be reusing this engine, so... I'm excited to like have a, an engine in place that I can that I can sort of use. I, I plan to use this for as many games in the future as I can. Um, yeah. How's everything going on your end, man?
How's it his gun coming? So we'll pick a frame. Maybe we'll just do auto ref. Auto ref frame equals how about cons auto ref? Cons auto ref frame equals frames at rand d rand in frames. What happened to this? Oh, this is frame names. Hey, what's up, Kula? Welcome to the stream today. Today's stream. Streaming at you from Northern Oregon. It's been three years? Wow. That's been a long time. That was, man, three years ago. That was like at the beginning of Songbringer. Yeah, you've been looking, you're thinking about 3D in your next game? Yeah, you know, it, it really is. It's, it's, I think there's something to be said for sticking to what you know well and not caring about um, people telling you you need to do something else or you need to, like, make it better. You know, like, 2D games are sweet. I love 2D games. Some of my favorite video games in the whole world are 2D, and it, sometimes it's like, it doesn't really matter whether you make 2D or 3D, you know? Like, in the end, it, it sells well. It doesn't, it doesn't, like 3D games, do they really sell better than 2D games? I don't know. Sometimes. Sometimes not. Sometimes you have a fan base going that loves your 2D stuff, so it really matters more that you just keep consistently making that kind of art. You know? And by art, I mean all of the art that goes into gaming, game making, like programming is an art. <clears throat> Music's an art. Yeah, sweet. All right, it is gone. Content complete. That is super cool to hear. It'll be three years. Yeah, man, it's been... Dude, I'm excited. You got a quality game coming out. I know it for sure. You ready to be done? Dude, I know that feeling. Oh. Say, you got it. Okay. A, a word of advice. You got to, like, rest a bit now if you can. Like, find a way, find a way to rest up your energies because... You're about to release, but you've been working so hard right now. Like, but when it comes time to release, it's going to be even harder. It's going to be like 10 times the work almost. Like you're releasing and you're fixing bugs frantically. And, you know, this is like your first game. So you don't know what to expect or whatever. And like, there's so much going on. So it's almost like if you can find a way to just take it easy through this as the, the, the like might med meditate or like work out or like go relax or like watch a movie or more often like whatever you can do to keep yourself from getting too stressed out you know what i mean like it can be really stressful releasing a game so so yeah i care about you man and like you know like if you take care of yourself right now it'll be a lot easier to release this game and enjoy the process too like and you should enjoy this fact that you worked so hard for three years and you're you got a great following built up. You got an awesome quality game, um, tons of content in it. You're gonna be, you know, breaking into the scene where you have like you're gonna have a following that cut, follows you for the next game. Like, enjoy it. Find a way to enjoy this without stressing yourself out too much. Yeah, yeah. Well, good. Oh, good. I'm glad you hadn't thought about that, and I possibly helped you out there, cause like, gosh, it. It's like, you, to anyone else watching the stream, like when you're at the end of making a game, you're like working 120% of what you are ever in the rest of the project. You're working so many hours fixing bugs and like cleaning up content and preparing the game for a release. Like, because there's so much new content you have to go and be like, oh, check it out. The Steam store needs these five new assets. And like, oh, oh yeah, should I release on GOG? Oh, okay, GOG's a whole nother platform. Now I gotta go sign some contracts. I gotta go like create some art for them. Oh, hey, they want a custom video. They want a video that's different than um, the other video that I created for Steam. Oh man, that's another week. You know what I mean? It's like so much stuff hits you. And then after you release, it's even more for a little while. 
Well, I, I shouldn't be trying to like, like, uh, take my experience and say that your experience is going to be the same or anybody that's watching this uh, because, you know, your experience might be different, but this is kind of how it is for a lot of game developers. It can be real stressful releasing games. So if you're out there and you're making games, make sure you stay in healthy. <laughs> I feel like Mr. Rogers should like walk in and will whistle us a tune now or something. Okay, shall we get back to this coding? So, refactoring in sprites. Sprites are... Let's do like something like this. I got this function to create sprites easily. Kind of how I did for Songbringers. This is Songbringers version. This is Wraithbinders version here. We're doing sprite create. The parent... Oh, right. The parent will be view, view parent. parent node that's right so if you're just joining the stream what I'm working on today is explosions I'm gonna be making it so uh, when the when a grenade goes off I'll show you real quick um, when a grenade goes off there'll be an explosion so that's the grenade it's got a really quick red square showing you where it's exploding at uh, but there'll be like smoke effects and it's sort of like a cool explosion going on so that that just looks a lot cooler that's my goal today Okay, so we're creating it with, oh, we want this smoke, this uh, frame. And we're putting it at position P. Anchor at the middle. Actually, should we do, yeah, anchor at the middle. Z is that Z. Are we missing any game scene layer? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's this all about? I forget what I had that in there for. Okay, set color, set opacity, set tag. Do we need to tag? Turn that off for a second. Rotation. Oh, rotation. Yeah, that always helps. The um, these uh, s these smoke animations are two uh, D. So it's nice to rotate them a little bit. So now I'm just refactoring these uh, animations here. These are our actions, you could say. In um, Songbringer code, I was heavily relying on Cocos 2DX for my game engine. Wraithbinder, I'm really not relying much on um, Cocos 2DX at all, really. It's, I can almost get rid of it completely at this point. It's, it's like buried underneath the game wrapper layer and I'm really not using it much at all. I wrote my own action system basically for for a wraith binder. And by action system, I really mean 2D action system. My 3D models are not even hooked up to uh, these nodes or actions or any concepts that came from Coco Studio X at all. Really, the, all these these nodes and sprites are just this whole system for using Coco Studio X is just for 2D sprites. So like the labels on the screen. And some of the 2D effects are really all that's all that Coco CDX is doing at this point. So we want to ease sign out scale to, and we don't need an action sequence on this first bit here. So we can just go action ease, ease sign out, and then we are scaling to, which is just scale in this language. And this is duration times 0 0.0675. And we're scaling from, let's do, let's create a from scale variable. Instead of instead of just having a magic number right here, and I did that because um, because I don't want to make 
coupled code frame scale from scale I don't want to make coupled code coupled code is anything where when you have to change some code you have to change it in two places that's bad it's very bad it's not cohesive code so what I what I did there is I since I created this variable called from I, the reason I created this from scale variable is because I'm using it twice I'm using it once here and once here so that deserves to be some kind of variable somewhere for that reason, also for the reason of not having a magic variable there, which I have tons of other magic variables, so I guess it's not as important to me. <laughs> to, wait, where did two scale come from? Whatever. Two scale. Okay, there. So we've duplicated that one. All right, the next one is uh, move by, also east, easing sign out, and scale move. This is duration. And just movement. Oh, no, move is from and to. So um, from is P. And two would be P plus movement. Okay, and then we have this final one to, to refactor here is a sequence where we fade, fade, and remove self. So we're fading in, fading out, and then removing. But I do I do this commonly, so that's why we have this already kind of set up. Oh, this has a delay in it though. We're gonna do an action. C action remove. Um, I think this is just zero. Yeah. Okay. And then we're, we have no ease. I like to keep these wrapped in eases because then I can add an ease later if I want to. So this is fade in duration. And this is just duration minus fade in duration and we're fading from opacity we'll say we'll do a uh, wait, what's the two opacity yeah it's just opacity so we'll do a from opacity as well And um, this one can be from opacity to opacity, and then opacity back to from opacity. OK, these are, oh, these are actually 3D. These are, these are 2D sprites with 3D positions. So I've got a cool way of doing that now where I don't have to move where the camera moves in a sweet way, right? It's really easy to create sprites. So basically I want to make this a child of camera node and then give it a three dimensional position. And then set its position like this, sprite.set position, set projection position. Oh, I wonder if the move will even work. Huh. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, the three D the three D positions might this might not work with this move here. Let's comment out this move for a second. Okay, if we're lucky. Wait, no, we got to hook up a lot more here. <laughs> There's uh we got to hook this up to the AI system first. So we've got this behavior special, we've got string smoke, count duration scale, let's do math clamp f those. Oh, 
Oh wow, can color be created from a string? Oh yeah, beautiful, all right. This is just color white. And an M smoke E dot position dot pause, right? Plus V3. This should be now this should be a Z component, I think. This is V3. This is the size of it, so it's 64. We'll also do 64 for the width. And now this should all be floated. What's out, what's missing here? An M smoke? Too few arguments. Oh, because why is that? Pause, size, count, duration, scale, opacity, color, Z. Pause. Size, count, duration, scale, opacity, color. Z. Oh, we're missing the Z. Okay, we got that hooked up. Um, this is a general behavior here. So we'll go, ugh. behavior special calls behavior special. And the last thing to do is go into, gr into um, shoot, I kind of want to see how Songbringer uses it. Hold on. Mate data. Okay, so let's search for through all my data from Songbringer for the smoke effect. Special smoke. The thief boss. Oh, yeah, the thief boss did this a lot. That's right. So there's some special smoke, the number of smokes, the duration, something else, something else, and the color. All right, so now we need to hook this up into the grenade explosion right by this screen screen shake special smoke yada 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 okay let's hope all that first of all compiles second of all works how we intended it to if we have any difficulties probably any difficulties you're probably going to do to the uh the the sprite position actually is really if i actually see any smoke right here that would be really cool Oh no, we, no smoke. So we messed something up somewhere. Let's start at the beginning. Let's see if we're even calling. God, I'm so happy that, oh, I'm so happy I can run this whole live stream while it, running at 60 frames a second. It's using 50% of, I guess, one CPU. I have eight cores here, so. Can't be 50% of all the cores. That's so cool. All right, so we'll set a breakpoint in that special smoke. See if that's even getting called. I was working on the blink yesterday, getting that to be more accurate. Okay, let's check this out. What? It's calling special already? That's crazy. Who's calling this already? What? Oh, this is this is definitely like one of the explosions or something. Uh. Oh, wait. Is this from I 
think this might actually be from the very beginning. It, I've got it loading a, a grenade explosion. Oh! Oh my god, I finally fixed a... I'm about to fix a bug that's been around for so long. So every time I load the game, the screen shakes. But I thought it had something to do with the mathematics for how it was moving the camera. But I just realized it's because we're loading this grenade explosion. If I do this, we shouldn't see the screen shake anymore. Yeah! <laughs> oh! oh, oh. That was so satisfying. Oh my god, it's been so long. Okay, so now all we gotta do is figure out a way to make this grenade explosion. Um, make this grenade explosion not do its screen shake and special smoke. Like, actually, we could just go to the grenade, and when it spawns, oh, there's a lot of places it spawns the grenade explosion. Uh, hmm. We want it to explode right away, but it doesn't really matter if the if the an animation is delayed like a single tick, like a sixtieth of a second. That's not too bad. Like what I could do here is add a tiny little delay, and um, and then just run the animation after that. Bah. I'd rather not do it that way. I got an idea. How about if when I go and create these, these are all just caching entities. This is in systems. Let's create a little function for this. Let's call this cache entity. Um, so we can split this up a bit. And what we'll do is we'll set up a set this entity up but without an AI timer. We can call the, we can give it a name. And auto ref E equals and get id. And let's go if E dot AI. E dot AI dot timer equals zero. So it won't be starting off its timer like it normally does. Oh. Now to uh now we just need to use this function. So cache entity. Oh, we just go to this. Do it like this. Cache entity.
Okay, so that should make it so, well, let's confirm this is working correctly. Yeah, okay, so we've loaded, um, I can't see file names right now, this is so weird. Because I have, uh, I don't want to explain exactly why, but it's it's not my fault, it's it's got to be LLDB's fault. It always comes up with these summary string parsing errors every once in a while. I have no idea why, and it's always changing whether it's string impl or just impl, ah, whatever. I wish I could read these strings though. Sometimes I'm debugging. I'm like, look, I can see all my strings. And sometimes I'm like, look, I can't see any of my strings. Right now, I can't see any of my strings. It would be nice. But I know this is an this is an explosion entity. This must be that. Yeah. Okay. This is timer. What was what's the timer already? Should be starting at something like, yeah, negative eight eight eight. So we're setting it to zero so we don't have this timer begin thing going on anymore. Yeah. Oh, oh it worked. It worked. It worked. So what that's doing is it's it's taking this grenade explosion AI. And because the timer is no is now just zero, it's not gonna call this any of this anymore. Let's check that again though. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I love seeing that. That's so awesome. Okay, now we go back to this behavior special and check out what's going on. Why it isn't, we can't see any smoke yet. Okay, cool. It's, it's at least calling this. That's good. It's calling, it's getting these variables all set up count should be 16 good uh, duration three seconds scale 0. 0.4 opacity 0. 0.4 color should be white oh we got a wrong color okay let's see let's do that again I'm not sure if I set that up correctly in color. Color from a string. Okay, we've got an op equals compared to a string. Oh, see, I never, I never got smart about this. Um, this needs to be smarter. So if there's a string that's six characters long, we should automatically append an opacity value of 255, or FF. And if, um, if the string's already eight characters, then we don't need to worry about it. This is, uh, so we go if stir.size is less than or equal to six characters. Actually, I think it should be greater than or equal to eight characters. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. So we shift that up eight and we add in add in that. I don't want to see that though. Oh, I guess we could do it like this. And 
And that makes it a little neater. Okay, I like that. Oh, what's wrong with this? It's a long, oh, right. Mm. Okay, so that should give, oh, that might have been why the, um, the explosions weren't visible, but it's probably not. All right, so this time, Okay, let's view this value as hex. Oh, oh, right, right, okay. So if stir size is less than or equal to six, good. Then we're taking the hex, shift it up eight, plus OXFF. Yeah, that worked. Cool, that worked. All right. I like it. Now our color should be F, 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 F. Ah. Uh, okay, we got pause. That looks good. Size, that's okay. Count, duration, scale, opacity, color. It's an int opacity. How many frames we got? We have four frames. That's good. What's our HSV? HSV. Okay, so our color is going to change a bit here. We've got that. Now we're going to be that. Okay. Still is a, looks like a valid valid color there. The pause. A little bit of randomness here. That still looks like a valid position. Wait, this is starting at 160. We're going to be adding a little bit here. Now we're 159. Okay. P.Z equals pause.z. All right. The actual Z we're using for the glow, the, the, The global Z, I forget what what that system's called. Oh, whatever. Okay. We've got two scale movement. Hmm. Let's see what movement turns out to be. Whoa. Oh wait. Oh, okay. Movement to negative eighteen. Six. Hmm. Oh, did the spray work? Shoot. Guess so. We're setting the projection position to that color. Oh, it could be the opacity is not working right. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, what's the duration? It's only 0.4. No, three seconds. This is looking legit here. Still, we have no smoke, though. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll divide and conquer this. Um... Start by making the parent the default parent and not using a position at all. I, I fumble with this new system of doing a parent node versus com a camera node each each time, man. We'll turn off all these Turn off all this stuff right now. What's up, Gafgar? Hello. Welcome to the stream today. I'm doing well, man. How are you doing? Two scale. Oh. So I'm going to go ahead and set the scale and opacity to the destinations. And we're a child of. So we also need to do one more thing sprite.set position 2D to something create the easy to. Easy to understand. Glad to hear you're well. Glad you're catching the live stream as well. It's been a minute since I did a live stream and I'm excited to be doing one today because I got a brand new computer that can actually run this game at 60 frames a second and do live streaming at the same time. It's like, it's I can finally do live streams without slowing down my whole computer and making my whole development like molasses I can develop fast chat with you guys and do everything with eight computer cores it's amazing all right so position 2d something simple like view get get res times a half I'm gonna go like this with these lines because these are like just temporary stuffs. Try and figure out this issue why we're not seeing any smoke yet. We should be seeing smoke. Okay, so this is now really simple. We should be just seeing some sm smoke um, in the middle of the screen. Oh, there! It's at the bottom left of the screen. Yeah, okay, I see it now. At least we see it. Okay, that's a good step. Very good step in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, and then and then you can slow things out. Let's see. Let's see if we can do that at some point. To, like once we get this all working, we'll see if we can slow this new computer down at all. That's always fun. I remember hitting that limit in Songbringer when I, we had like it was a live stream where people were like. Put in as many as you can. Let's see if we could get this, get it up to crash. And I think we got it to crash at like 2,000 sprites or something on the screen at once, or maybe it was 2,000 extra sprites. I can't remember. 
Okay, so we see it. It's in the bottom left. It doesn't make any sense because we're setting position 2D of u.getRes times a half. It's a child of the parent node. So this get res times a half. Oh, 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 oh. This needs to be get res times a half. As float. Also a thing I stumble with in this engine. My V3s are... Uh, I'm trying to make them integer based. and But then you got to have floating points too. It's... There we go. We got some smoke in the very middle of the screen. Okay. Also another good step in the right direction. And that should just add more and more smoke to the middle of the screen because we're not ever deleting it. Okay, good. So now we can go ahead and introduce these scales and opacities again and see if this was what was messing it up. We'll start there. Uh, because it's it's writing K, L, and J when I move the cursor because that's that's what Vim those are Vim keys. So in Vim, this is the editor I'm using, this command line editor. It's called Vim. Um, and uh, when you press K, it moves the cursor up. When you press J, it moves the cursor down. When you press H, it moves the cursor left. And when you press L, it moves the cursor right. These are just the basic movement keys when you're in Vim. The reason they do that is because you never have to move your fingers from the home row, right? Instead of having to move your hand, to your arrow keys and move things around. Um, you don't have to do that at all. You just use the H, J, K, and L. And it's uh, it basically just saves your, your hands from getting tendinitis. I've had tendinitis a couple times in my game development career and I don't want to get it again. So when, ever since I switched to Vim, I haven't. But also when I switched to Vim because of that, I found another a lot of other reasons that I really loved Vim. So for me, Vim is just the jam. I love it. Oh yeah, yeah, so this is kind of what it's like to use it. You know, you're using commands like this. And there's what's really great about Vim is that it has modes, right? So you're, right now I'm in like a normal mode, which means I can move the cursor around. But if I press the I key, I go into this thing called insert mode. You can actually see it at the bottom of my screen. Um, it shows there's an, a blue line that says insert. I'm now in insert mode and everything I type becomes characters that are inserted, right? Um, and, uh, and you press escape to go back into normal mode. So it's it's it takes some getting used to, right? If you're used to an editor that's normal, like uh, any any normal text editor where you just type and it's always in it's basically just always in insert mode. That's the way I think of it now. But anyways, let's get back to the what we're doing here. Um, we've turned on the scaling and opacity. Yeah. Oh, you have a lot of customizations in hockeys and VS? Yeah. I like Visual Studio too. It's a good one. I really prefer Vim though these days. I would if I could just figure out how to code in Vim in every platform, I would do that. Okay, let's throw a bomb. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's the problem. We throw the bomb and there's no more smoke. Okay, so that was part of the issue then before. Why is that? Okay, it's either the scale or it's the opacity. Let's try commenting out the scale first. Oh, that was it. Okay. So good. We've got the scale. It was the op it was a scaling action. What if we do this? We just have the action and none of this from set scale. 
Yeah, it can be a bit slow, can it? Yeah, it does win out really well. I like its debugger. That's one of my favorite parts about uh, Visual Studio is its debugging. It's pretty good about it. It's uh, it's variables, it's auto watching, and all that kind of stuff. There's a couple other things I like about Visual Studio. I forget. Oh, I like it's. I like how it now has that um that sidebar where you can see a, a an overview of your code. Yeah, <laughs> when it works. Yeah, I know what you mean. The edit continue is pretty cool when it works. Okay, so let's see if that scaling ease action works there. Yeah, the map scroll bar. That's what it. I love that. You know, they started that like that was the first time I saw that was in like uh, what's that one text editor that uses it really prominently? I forget what it's called anymore. Okay, we're no, we're no longer have those grenade explosions. Okay, this scale is really messed up. Either I've got the from scale to scale wrong, or the action ease. Oh, wait a minute. It's, oh, I think it's a, because it needs to be a vector. Oh, I think it's, I think that's what it is. It needs to be a vector. Yeah, that's super cool, right? I, I love that too. I love you can see where your errors are. In the, that map scroll bar, that thing's dope. That's I, that's something I wish I could add to Vim. I guess it would have to be some kind of ASCII art version of a map scroll bar. <laughs> That'd be weird. Emacs could probably do it. Emacs has its own like whole. You can change all the graphics down to like the pixel level in, in Emacs. In scale, in scale. What's scale? Yeah, that needs to be a V3. That's all it was. Okay. So we need a, the scale. So let's call this float scale with a an underscore. Actually, we can keep it like that. Because our two scale is going to become a V3. And our from scale is v3. And we need to start. Uh, do we need this? Let's just let's start without that. And then we got from scale, to scale. They're now v3s. Okay. So it might have been this whole time that the only error I had here was that my my uh, scales needed to be vectors rather than just floating a single floating point variable. Yes. Okay. We've got smoke appearing, disappearing. Great. Um, can we add back in this movement? I'm not sure yet. Hey, cool, man. Yeah, dude. Nice. Thanks for saying hello, man. We'll catch you next time. See you, Gafgar. I think we can do this now too. Okay, and the next thing we're gonna do is add in the back in the 3D positions so this smoke can be in the three-dimensional world and have its own independent movement and stuff like that for each one of these independent smoke entities. So our parent is gonna become camera node and the position is going to be a projection position. We no longer have this 2D position. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. See ya. June bug. June bug just flew in the van. And then back out. Hey, cool. We've got some smoke right there. 
And then if we rotate the camera, good, we've still got the smoke there. Okay, so there's a lot messed up. Oh, because of the movement. It really needs some movement. Ah. Okay, this is where I almost need to start making this system better for projection position. I've I got this funky method called set projection position. It's not funky exactly, but it's, it is. It's a bit funky, but it's, this needs to be improved. What's happening here is we're essentially just setting a three-dimensional position in this function called set projection position. It really should be called like something like set position 3D. Uh, because what we're doing is we're taking a 3D position, projecting it to get us a 2D position, and then setting the node's two-dimensional position that way. So with this movement, we want to move in 3D. So we want to... Um, the move action... Oh, I guess... Oh, I think I kind of figured it out. We can make this move action a little bit smarter. Hey, hold on. What happens if I just run it like this? I'm just assuming that it will break. Probably will. Yeah, we got no more smoke anymore. Because it's, it's, it's using... Oh, what the heck? Oh, there's the smoke. Oh, hey! Huh? Well, how does it work all of a sudden? Oh, it doesn't work. Okay, it doesn't work when we've rotated. Oh, it only works when we're at that angle. Because okay, I get it. It works when we're at this this camera rotation because there essentially is no, um, no other camera stuff going on there. There's no other voodoo because we haven't rotated the camera yet. What's up, Rustum? Yes, this is a whole voxel engine on top of Coco CDX. It's at this point I'm really not even using Coco CDX much at all. The only thing that Cocos is doing is uh, like labels, like text labels, and uh, two-dimensional sprites. So eventually I won't even be using Cocos to DX anymore. Uh, so, yeah. And that is basically because I would rather use my publisher's engine. They have a kick-ass engine. And, um, and it just makes things easier. When we get to the end of this game and it gets you know, ported to different platforms, it'll be easier when we're, I'm using their engine. Okay, so what I was saying there earlier about the three-dimensional positions, this this uh, action move is moving the two-dimensional position. So I think we can actually go to actions to get this working right, we need to make it move its three-dimensional position, not its two-dimensional position. Here it is, actions, uh, action move is what we're looking for. Okay, so we're mixing to, this is a simple mix of that position to that position. I forget this get v3, that's a const ref. So we can go auto ref from equals that and two equals this. And then we can say if um, if from dot z or two dot z, right? If either one of those are three dimensional positions, then set the projection position. Maybe you just call that a pause, because now it's not necessarily a two-dimensional pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wraithbinders with double eleven. Um, I've just I love these guys. They've kind of become family to me. 
um, and uh, they support me so well, and it's just, it's so great to be able to, like, have a game and be able to make it, um, you know, do do most of the work for myself for, for the Steam version, you know, or whatever, and then have them come and help me get it on other platforms like Xbox or PlayStation and stuff. They're, and there's just a million reasons I love working with these guys. They're just, I had some bad experiences working with publishers um, back in the 1990s, actually. I made a few games when I was a kid and had a bad experience. And I was like, I'll never get a publisher again, blah, blah, blah. And uh, that's why I did a uh, Kickstarter for Songbringer. And um, and then and then the, they found me, Double Eleven found me on while I was doing my Kickstarter for Songbringer. And I, I decided to work with them. Um, and they they changed my opinion of publishers forever. Like they are cool people. They let me do what I want, and they completely support me at the same time. They're just amazing. They they know what's up, and they're trending upwards. You know, they're like you're getting better and better and growing and having success in their the game publishing world. I'm excited for them and what they're doing. I'm excited to be a part of what they're doing too. It's cool, and I'm also excited because I finally in my life I finally have someone that can help me market my games too. You know, it's like I'll do all my own marketing as much as I can. I'll post on Twitter, I'll do these live streams, I'll make videos, I'll do everything I can to market my game, but to have a little help too, never hurts, you know what I mean, especially in the marketing department where just spreading the word is very important, let's see if that worked, Okay, if I can, if we got the smoke, now if I, yes, it worked. If I rotate the camera, that kind of shows you that it's working. But there's some issues. Um, the smoke is too small, and it looks like there's some, it looks like there's some weird lines inside the smoke. Let's open up the sprite sheet real quick. I wonder what the Oh, it's not common. I think it must be 32 or something. This one called 32. Yeah, these smokes look all right. It's not like they're they're being clipped or anything in this what's this or zero? That's zero one. Okay, these look fine. They're kinda hard to see against this this background, but I can see that there's no like what's like number three? Yeah, there's no like straight lines or anything in them. Alright, so we're gonna need to we might need to zoom the camera in a little bit to see what's up here. I'll slow I'll slow time down and that will really help to check this out. Yeah, oh. Oh, okay, I think I see what's going on. It's as if as if some of them had no um Like no Y scale or whatever. Oh, that's that might just be that we're not. Let's go into the smoke method. Ah. NM smoke. Set a breakpoint in here. Oh, so this what I'm trying to fix here with the smoke is that um, it's got these. Uh, I'll I'll zoom in. Let's let's take a screenshot. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's got these like lines. I think what's happening is it's squashing down the smoke in a certain dimension. So if we go like this and slow down time a lot, it creates. See that? Oh, yep. That's definitely it. It's it's some of the dimensions of the smoke are just wrong
See that so there's like let's get a little color we can draw with real quick. See how it's like it's drawing like it's squashed down one of the smokes right there, and this is definitely squashed a lot too. And that one looks like it's squashed right there. So this just looks really weird. It's supposed to be circular. So it's gotta be it's gotta be the variable I'm passing in for the scale. Um it might just be just single dimension. In fact, I think I did do that wrong. This const v3 from scale equals 0.01f. That might only be setting the x variable and not all three. So if I go there, and we're just, we can just step, uh, should I step in? Yeah, I'll step into this method. Yeah, now you can see it, yeah. So if I step into this method here, we're setting it to just, Oh no, see that should work. X, Y, and Z are all being set to the same variable. So from scale should just be 0.01 in all, yeah. From scale's right. Huh. Maybe two scales wrong. Great. That's awesome, man. Thank you. Um I, you know, I, I like to share my process a little bit and, you know, hopefully just like maybe teach, teach some things, you know, share the things I've learned. Really, it's more just sharing. I'm trying to share what I've learned and help other people be creative because I, I think there's no limits to the creations that we can make as, as human beings. And this is a really cool art form. Um, it's interactive art. That's what games are. It's just an interactive art form. It's like going to um, a museum and being able to interact with an art piece, except that you can do it in your home and you can, and you can interact in so many different modes. You're interacting visually, audio-wise, tactile with the game controls. It's a cool art form and I love it. I love that you can tell a story with games too. Not only are you allowing the player to influence the world and change the world as they play but you're also can you can tell a story and kind of make an, a lasting impact morally or inspirationally or just whatever you can kind of make an impact in people's lives with games if you um yeah even if you don't try shit heck maybe it's the two scale where's this two scale here it is Run to there. From scale is still good. To scale. Yeah, it's the same one. Huh. Okay, the next thing I'm going to check is the... We've got the scale 2D. Do we set... Oh, oh, this might be it. I was setting a three-dimensional scale there. This might need to be just 2D. That's probably what it was. Uh, put put what together? You mean this game or, or last Songbringer or? Oh, it's still doing the thing. Oh, you know what? It might actually be scaling it in in three D. Okay, the next thing to debug is the action scale. So action scale, we'll go here and figure that out. Now, how did I come, oh, with this game? Yeah, that's good, I'm so glad it looks like Songbringer, but, um, but it's 3D, that's the whole point. That's exactly what I'm going for with this, is I want it to look just like Songbringer, except that you can rotate the camera. So, um, 
how did I come up with this game? I was just trying to create a, a Songbringer like game, sort of like Songbringer, but but uh, multiplayer. So this is a sort of a, just a you know you're gonna uh, you're gonna battle people Songbringer style, but online. And there's gonna be a lot of cool upgrades you can get to your character and like a really cool meta game going on. Oh, why didn't we get a breakpoint here yet? I thought I pressed that button. Yeah, so this is kind of basically Wraithbinder is a Songbringer spin-off, but multiplayer. I just uh, the kind of the point is just to kind of create a combat style that's just like Songbringer, except that it's you play it out in multiplayer. Um, uh, XV. Okay, yeah. Let's figure out why that's not working. Should be good. Oh, it might be mix V. So A dot get B three. Um, all right, what do we got here? These are good. A is good. B is good. Mix V, set I, mix I, Y, X, Y, Z. Those all look fine. So we've mixed it down to the V3 scale, and those are all good. Yeah, 0 0.012, 0 0.012. Sk set scale 2D. Why is that still messed up? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe it really is like messing up the math somewhere. Like, so what if we go if scale dot x is not equal to scale dot y, then we do some kind of break like that. It could actually be making the face of it change. Like, it could actually be rotating the... Oh! That's what it is. It's none of this stuff. I know exactly what it is now. It's the rotation. This needs to be a 2D rotation. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. There we go. And if I rotate the camera, you still see the smoke in the same spot that it was. Cool. That's working really well now. Okay, um, but it's not big enough. If we run Songbringer... Yeah, see, the smoke is a lot bigger. And it also does like a plume of smoke, too. Yeah, there's two smokes going on there. There's like a plume of smoke that's black that comes out, and then there's the white smoke that comes out, too. Okay. So, yeah, we need bigger smoke. I wonder why the... Why the scale is... Oh, because these are, these smokes I'm taking from a different point. Different place. Let's go. Let's look at all the Anim's smokes. We should be looking for the one that comes from. What's all this? Boss explosion? Okay. Countdown shakes. 
Seeker Wall. Flux? What's this? Seen as the steam tower rising. Oh, it's gotta be in here. This is uh Sparks. Oh no, it's AI system. <laughs> oh no, yes, no, yes, no. It's one of these. Not that one. This one, mood explode. Okay. There's only eight of them, but wow, oh, there's a scale of seven. Okay. Oh, we've got two of these going this. Okay, so we're going here. Go back to this grenade explosion. And, and we can just sort of mimic those. So instead of it being 16, we're going to do 8. And these are 7 big. And they last, or what was this one, scale? This is opacity, so 62. 62 over 255. What the heck? I swear I pressed the two there. 0.24. And this one is the color, and this one is black. And other than that, I think we're good. Yeah. That's better, but why is it taking so long to scale up? It's kind of weird. Let's go back to our NIMS. Hmm. Why is it so weird about that? We don't need this anymore. We don't need oh, that. It's already gone. Oh, I don't need the that we have the from scale starting correctly oh so yeah the scale happens really fast 0. 0.0675 times the duration is that right let's see about this we can go into here. This is Songbringer's code again. Our scale happens at uh Yeah, no, that's it's still E sign out and it's scaling at a duration times 0.0675. That seems really slow. Maybe Maybe let's try making it faster. And yeah, that was too fast. <laughs> okay. Maybe uh, I think it needs to be. Uh, let's, let's let's make a scale a special scale duration variable, and we'll just clamp it. So a minimum value for this. What's before at when the animation was only three seconds long. It was scaling up to what it needed to be at in 0.2 seconds. Yeah, it's just 2D. So I'm using a mixture of 2D, 2D and 3D for some of these things because um, 
it's really expensive to do three-dimensional transparent huge volumes uh look, look check this out check out the math for this if you have simply a hundred let's say a hundred pixels by a hundred pixels your your image is ten thousand pixels right okay we can accept that right a hundred by a hundred is only ten thousand pixels but what if you add another dimension and you go to a hundred pixels in the Z. So you have a 3D sprite. Let's just call it a voxel model. And you multiply that by a hundred to get another dimension. Now we're up to a million. So we go from 10,000 pixels to a million voxels, right? This can get really, really expensive. Just, I mean, loading your model. For for example, that's going to be quite all time consuming. So anyways, I'm using a mixture of 2D effects when I can because it's way more efficient. Um, and I think with smoke being a really transparent thing, I think it will look pretty well. It'll look really good in inside this engine just as it is. So a minimum, let's say of, oh, no, we want a maximum of 0.2. So a minimum of point. O one F and a maximum of point two F. Uh yeah, we'll see how this how this goes. Oh cool, glad. Okay, let's see that again. Yeah, that was better, right? It it came alive a little bit faster. Gosh, I guess it's because the engine is running a little. That's actually really helping a lot, huh? Being able to see that smoke. Why? Why is it moving so much with the camera, though? I think we need to change. Let's change the wind so there's no. Right? Yeah, it can be. It can be very difficult to make realistic effects. You know who does it really well is the game Aider. Did they ever? Did they ever release Aider? I feel like a bad game developer for not knowing. It was released. It was released last year. Oh man, I can't believe I haven't played Aider. Why didn't it tell me it was released? Is it not on my wish list? It's on my wish list. I must. Oh no, it's not out yet. Okay, good. I feel like I'm. I feel vindicated now. <laughs> I'm vindicated. But yeah, the effects here in Aider are amazing. I mean, it's a completely 2D engine, but still, they, they, they've done a lot of, like, 3D. No, it's not a 2D engine. I think they're working with, uh, I think they're working with, with, um, is it Unreal? Or are they using, uh, Unity? See, there's some, there's one of their smoke effects right there in this screenshot. I don't know how... Hmm. Anyways, anyways, they have good effects. Oh, right, yeah, like fire, which is a polygon inside a texture, and yeah. Okay. So, I think we're, you know what, that point two is a little bit fast. Let's make this, let's try point three being the max. It would be, I think it would be like, oh. uh, let's rotate the camera back to this angle. Yeah, that's a little too slow still. Shoot. We got a good screen shake going on here. 
It's like kind of weak. I want a more of a screen shake here. Okay, and we got an explosion oval, explosion. Oh, the explosion oval. Yeah, that'll look cool. Adding that. Uh, where is the thing I'm looking for? What was I looking for again? Oh no, <laughs> I've hit brain forgetfulness. Are those individual blocks make, making up the ground flatten this price before putting them into the game world? No. So this this Wraithbinder engine I've written from scratch, the, all these voxels, these are actual 3D models and they are not flattened to 2D before they put into the game engine. So they're they're actually these models I made here in Magic of Voxel. Let's go look at one of these ground uh, entities here. So like there's there's one of the ground entities, for example. This is this is basically just how it is in the in Wraithbinder in the game, except that um, it's turning every one of these voxels into a single pixel. That's all there is to it. So everything is still a 3D model, except for things like the smoke and stuff like that so far. Smoke and light beams, those are also 2D. So let's go look at the light beams. Like There's a light beam right here on this very beginning. There's one shining right there in the middle of the screen. That's a 2D effect. There's a bunch of these light beams all over the place. But all the all the like objects and things like that, um, and the characters and everything, all that's 3D. Even these even these particles right here, these are 3D too. You can't really tell because they're only a single pixel, but they're 3D. Yeah, I hope, and I've, I'm kind of excited about this because I've, I haven't ever seen an another game do this yet, where there were the, um, the whole world is a is a voxel world, but the voxels are really tiny. We're used to voxel engines like Minecraft, where we've got these huge, huge voxels with textures on them. This is a lot different, and I haven't, I'm not sure if I've seen this before in a game. Yeah, the char the characters too. The animations for the characters as well. Yeah, so like, for example, the characters run animation. This is kind of how it'll work. Like, um, let's check out this run. Um, it's see that's that's frame one, frame two, frame three, frame four, frame five, frame six. So I'm actually animating in a pretty much a pixel art style, like just how I would with Songbringer. In fact, let's see, can we open up Songbringer real quick? Something from Songbringer. Let's do this. Um, we'll open up. I mean, you're you're all familiar with this kind of like art, but it's just 2D sprite art where you're just every single frame is a different. Um, here's his here's his board animation. Good, good, good. Yeah. I want it to I want it to be like that. I want it to be surprising like, "Whoa, this is a 3D engine when you go and rotate the camera." So, you know, this is just him every single one of these frames it just changes the pixels a little bit, right? To make him do his animation. It's the exact same thing here in um in 3D except that we're using a different model for every one of the frames. Right? So, and I really haven't spent very much time at all on the animations. Like, once I get really into this, I'll do some really sweet animations. And um, this game is going to have an armor system. So that's going to be one of the cool, one of the fun parts about this game is that you, there'll be a really cool meta game where you're battling other players um, to uh, in in the regular game, right? But then when after your battles, you go back to your spaceship. And you can buy equipment and stuff. Like you can buy armor. The armor gives you upgrades, and it also changes the looks. So there'll be um, different layers of armor added into this model to make like a, a single model. So you'll start with the. It'll start with this base character model like this, where it's just the player and their basic skin and clothes or whatever, right? 
and then it'll add on shoulders it'll add on a helmet it'll add on like all the other parts of the armor, right? And, it, and it'll probably even be able to change the weapon, I think, to change the way the weapon... Maybe you want to hold your weapon in a different stance or whatever. So all that kind of stuff you'll be able to buy on the ship with, with stuff that you earn from your battles. And you'll change your look, you'll change your stats, and and it'll also... You'll also be able to customize the, char the character's uh, colors. So, like, let's say I want to... It's all gray right now because I want to want to emphasize the fact that eventually this will be colored with, with different colors. So like every character you'll be able to change like, okay, I want my character to have this kind of hairstyle. I want his skin to be this color, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it's really neat having my own voxel engine to be able to do all that too. Like I'm, just, I'm really stoked about this. It was well worth the time to make it. I think we could check this in so far. We've got a good smoke going on. Now we can add in like the explosion oval and some other stuff. Why why am I just fixating on that? I'm 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 like I feel like it's fading in too slowly. Let's go look at Songbringer again. Oh wow, my screen wasn't at full brightness. That's a little bit better. Why does that look so much better? Oh, I don't know. Oh, maybe it's maybe it's the screen shake. The screen is shaking so much that you can't really tell the the Oh yeah, and there's that that plume explosion animation too. Hmm. So there's the there's a bunch of different effects going on, but it might just be that screen shake. That's what I was looking for here. The screen shake. Where is that here in this explosion? Burn mark. Let's go to the top. There it is. It's super. This is a regular one. So 1.5 times the duration. And then 2.5 is the strength. So we go to the grenade explosion. Okay, what's the duration here? Oh, he's super one point six. It's point six seconds times one point five. How do you know which vi voxels are behind the smoke? So it, it's um because it's separate systems, right? Those are the smoke is two D, the the everything else, all the voxels are three D, right? Um, the way my voxel engine works is it it takes the whole scene and renders it all into a frame buffer. So there's really no way I can mix in two D effects with the three D layer, right? There's so there's basically it's like a three D layer of stuff and then on top of that whole layer is the smoke so there's no way to put the smoke anywhere 
mixed in with the 3D stuff. It's it's either on top of all the 3D stuff or it's below all the 3D stuff. And uh, the smoke needs to be on top. So that's why that's why I can only use this 2D effect mixed in with the 3D stuff for stuff that can be that needs to be on top. If it's stuff that needs to be mixed into the world and and in the right Z position, right? That needs to be drawn with the 3D with models. So I need to, so some of these things I can pull off with the 2D effect and some of these things I cannot at all pull off that way. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we'll screen shake 0 0.9 and uh it was 2.5. Oh, and I need to make sure that is what I'm thinking it means. Duration is flow valve one, strength is flow valve. Yeah, okay, that's right. Yeah, exactly, Rustin. Yeah, you got it. That's exactly what's happening. So there's a very tiny frame buffer that I'm rendering all the 3D stuff to. It's the same size as Songbringer's frame buffer. It's like 400 pixels ish, about wide, right, and about 250 ish pixels tall. It totally depends on your screen ratio and those kinds of things. Uh, but that tiny scale, that tiny frame buffer, is scaled up to the size of the screen, which is which makes your game really, really efficient in general, right? To do something like that, rather than especially for the GPU. With my older laptop. Just that one thing alone is what got Songbringer to be running at 60 frames a second all the time. And uh, and it really made Wraithbinder and this engine run a lot faster when I got the frame buffer working with it. Uh, it's kind of the secret sauce, you know? It's like, it also it also makes all of your your pixels perfect. So you have to make your all your pixel art really perfect to make it, to make it fit with the frame buffer and look right. Um, but then you can get in trouble. You can actually, is when you're putting sprites on top of your frame buffer, you can make things look a little weird, or not quite as pixel perfect. I mean, oh, that that does help a little bit with the screen shaking a little bit differently. Okay, I'm really liking this. I think this is worthy of check in at this point. Wait a minute, why? I'm still wondering why it doesn't move with the camera that... Oh well, I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. Let's go ahead and check this in so far. This is great, having all these special smoke anims being able to be called from AI. This is an artifact, this is the grenade explosion AI calling this smoke animation. Um, we've got 2D sprites able to move in a 3D position, with 3D positions. Uh, this was getting the colors to load correctly, even if they're only six characters long instead of eight. This was the the method inside um, the AI system to create smoke and with the special. Now that's an interesting idea, Russum. I have never considered that. Now, what what would you? What would you think the the benefit of doing like what what would be the reason to do that? What are you thinking that would accomplish? Special. There's the wind. We're getting it from the wind vector. That's cool. Here's our little bit commented up, kind of dirty function, but it's, but it's functional to create smoke. Oh, we've got a new method to cache entities, and we fixed that bug with the freaking screen shaking at the beginning. Ha. Huh. That's so great. All this code looks pretty clean, though. So let's go ahead and check it in. This is uh, create the smoke animation. Oh, to make it a similar visual style, right? Yeah, yeah. I get you. So we would force all those effects to be pixel perfect. What? Oh, wait. I think it I think I may have a way to do that pretty simply. Right? The there's the there's okay, so there's a, a single buffer for the voxels which technically isn't quite the frame buffer yet. It's its own buffer. So there's the voxel buffer and then there's a frame buffer 
on top of that. And then there's a second frame buffer too. So I may be able to render all the 2D sprites into like the second frame buffer. In fact, I think I think we might be able to do that really simply with just one line change here in this anims. If I go sprite dot set camera, whoa, camera C camera FBO one or two, probably two, so it doesn't FBO one will give it some some cool two D effects like bloom and blurring and things like that. But FBO2 will skip those. We probably want to skip those because I don't want it to ever seem too bright. So if I do that, we technically should be using the second FBO for all these, and it will be pixel perfect. Let's see if it, that changes the look. At, whoa. So yeah, now they're invisible. So we definitely messed that up somehow. Wait, maybe it's because they're behind this, behind stuff. Nope, that's not helping. What about FBO1? Oh, we're when oh wait, we're using the camera node. No, that's a really good idea, Russ. I'm like seriously, you bring up a very good point. I probably will work on this. Oh, FBO one is working. Now that's weird. Hmm. I think I'll leave it there as FBO one for now. Yeah. Okay. Let's work on the next stuff. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take, I'm really going to take that into, into mind, though, and, and work on that at some point in the future. We'll leave that. Okay. Um, so if we can get the, the explosion oval, that would be sweet. Oh, also making the explosion go in a damage wave. That's probably the most important of all. Oh, really? Oh, one sec. I got a package here. I got to go. Go grab. Be all right back. Package delivered. Right? It's like it's happening. Yeah. Let's check that out. Let's we'll slow down time. I think it may be because we added this one line. Okay, so we gonna we've got FBO one on right now. Oh yeah, no, you're totally right. The screen shake is not moving those. So what if we go like that? The screen shake is affecting the... Th oh! 
This might not work either. Oh, did that work or not? I... Yeah, no, that's not working either. Okay. Okay. I think I know what to do here. Yo, what's up, Teak? Member 7, thank you for bringing that up. This is really... I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that you noticed that. That was really hard to... That's not easy to notice that. <laughs> that was a really, really cool detail to have... Uh, to get this straight here. I think all needs to happen is see, in, I got this thing called lens, which is kind of like the camera lens, you know, um, which sets the camera, sp like it sets an extra transform for the camera sprite. The camera sprite is actually whoa. We just want to move the camera node. Oh uh, wait, the camera. Yeah, maybe we just set the transform on the camera node, too. Oh, I hope that works. Yo, Teak, how you been, man? Okay, so... Um, we'll throw a bomb, slow down time. Yeah, it worked. Nice. That was kind of like a smaller shake that time. Why is it so small? Let's make it a crazy, crazy big effect here. You're, you've been fine? Clean out your apartment? Cool. Visitors tomorrow, huh? Let's go to that grenade real quick and make the explosion shake, I mean, like 10 times as big. So we can just really confirm that that is in fact working now. We're gonna slow down time, this bomb. Yeah, I, yeah I'm pretty sure it's moving the smoke as well. I, let's move, let's, instead of 20.5, let's go five. Yes, nice. Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Yeah, that's definitely shaking up that camera too. All right, that's cool. Thanks again to member 7 for pointing that out. All right. So we let's just go ahead and close everything now. Get back in here and we'll okay. I need, to, I need to make a decision whether I do damage as a wave now. How much more time do I have in today's stream? It's already, th it's already three. Three o'clock. Dang, I got to get going. How long is this stream? I feel like it's only been 20 minutes. It's already been two hours and 15 minutes. Well... Dang. I gotta get going. Shoot. Well, it was actually a really productive stream there. This is, okay, this is monumental, actually. This is the first live stream I've ever done where I could stream at 60 frames. I could play my game at 60 frames a second, compile really fast, and do a live stream at the same time. Oh, dang. Twitch just sent you the notification. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I got I got stuff I have to do this afternoon. I got chores and stuff. I'm at my mom's actually in uh, in Northern Oregon, and I gotta mow the lawns today. <laughs> yeah, but I'm on a new laptop. I'm on a new laptop. This thing has eight cores instead of two. It has a really nice GPU as well, and this thing just is smoking fast. It's so sweet. It's so awesome to be able to stream fast. Like I've if all through the Songbringer days, remember I would I would compile and it would take forever. Watch this. Let's let's recompile the entire Wraithbinder project. Let's see how fast it goes while we're live streaming.
boom, all of Kit Fu's done, and there, all of Song Wraithbinder's done compiling. <laughs> yeah, it's an Apple. Yeah, yeah, new hardware. Oh, new hardware for the win! Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it so much. I'm so glad I I'm so glad I splurged on getting the the faster hardware too. Like I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna spend the extra thousand bucks and like get the fastest computer I can with the 15 inch and like the really rad GPU. I'm not even sure if it's kicking in the GPU to do all this stuff. It's look. It says here in um in iStats that I'm using my. Oh, I guess I am using the Vega right now. The Vega is like this is the the fast GPU. It's got two GPUs actually. It's got a regular GPU for its like eco mode, where it's barely using the 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 power. And then it's also got this fast Vega 16 for when I want to play games or, hopefully, do live streams and stuff like that. Okay, good. And Game Show is using the GPU for its. I guess Game Show must be the thing you eating up the GPU there. That's great. Yeah, I know. I do. I hate their ecosystem too. Yeah, I. I oh gosh, I've had a lot of bad incidents with Apple lately, <laughs> but I still love their hardware. Ah, uh, but anyways. Uh, I do got to get going. It's already been over two hours in this live stream. And uh, like I said, I got chores to do today. <laughs> well, but, but it's been very enjoyable. Got a lot of code done um, today. And thanks, everybody, for your, your comments and feedback and stuff like that. It really helped out. So, uh, yeah, um, that's it for this live stream. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. As always, this will be uploaded to YouTube for archiving and um and I'm always available on Twitter so check you guys later cheers <laughs>